So my name is Mark, I am uh, from Northampton, UK. Uh, I've been riding as a, as a young kid um, way back in, in the 90s. So I first saw um, a couple of people on the British TV show Blue Peter uh, riding these snakeboards and I just thought a board where you don't have to touch the floor, sold. Dutch Ultra Skate is something I first stumbled on during Covid. So I think like a lot of people, um, who were trying to find something to do during COVID. I dusted off the old uh, snake board and started getting into longer distances. At the same time, you know what it was like, you couldn't go out, so you're watching more TV. And I stumbled across uh, a YouTube video around um, a Miami ultra skate, which I thought, oh, that sounds really, really cool, quite interesting. And then I found that actually there's one in Europe, in, in, in the Netherlands. Concept could be simpler, it's just how far can you skate in 24 hours? It took place um, on a cycle track which was custom built for, for cycling, so it's a perfect track and it's just outside of Amsterdam. I've done the odd marathon in my time, so I've always been a, a bit of a, a runner, so that, that certainly helps in terms of, of the cardio, but this is the, that was the well, biggest thing I've ever done was this by far. So I started doing it in, in Covid. I started for 5k, 5 became 10, 10 became 20, etc. And I just wanted to see how far I could push it. I did stumble across um, the Cambridge uh, guided busway. Uh, I found it in a, in a longboard group, so I met with some longboarders. Um, and I was doing that um, every week for, for a couple of months in the build up because it's just a, a dead flat, dead straight, um, perfect pavement. It's 20, 20 kilometres, so you could just go there and back just under a marathon and that was like the perfect training ground. That's the good thing about uh, streetboarding because it is something obviously that people do very often uh, but they're perfectly designed for it because if you've got a right setup you can go for miles without getting too fatigued and I think a lot of the reason for that is because you're actually using all sorts of parts of your body so not one particular um, like muscle group gets tired I was really nervous going into the event because I'd done a 100k, which is the furthest I'd done leading up to it, a couple of weeks before, and my lower back really hurt, which surprised me. I hadn't experienced that before, and I think because of the constant twisting motion, it just got to my back after a while, um, and also my neck. Because you're constantly looking one direction, um, then yeah, it, it, it gets your neck after a while. But other than that, my legs were, were fine. Um, everything else is all right. It was just uh, my back a bit and also my, my shoulders and neck. I think that's something I need to work on because I can ride switch, but not good enough to keep the pace that I want to. Because at least if I could ride switch, you can look, look the other way for, for a bit. So I was just constantly looking left. Um, it wasn't too bad because I did have some like muscle relief cream that I just put it all over my neck before I started and kept topping it up. So during the event, my neck was actually nowhere near as bad as I, I thought it was going to be. So, so going into it, I tested out um, different setups. So firstly, in terms of the boards, um, I used your Dragon Team boards, the, the yellow one. I mean, I'm going to be honest, a large factor of that is just because I, I just love the colour. So that was a big factor. But also the slightly longer foot plates over the cruiser that I've got, and also some of the older, um, uh, I think like the Charlie and some of the older snake boards, just meant that I could have my feet ever so slightly above the, it well, in front of the front wheel. So you know what it's like if you're riding at speed, you try and um, put a bit more weight over the front wheel just to help you keep that uh, stability. Well, you could do that a bit more on, on the team board. So that was the main reason um, I selected that board. In, in terms of the wheels, I had uh, 85 um, millimeter wheels on there. A real game changer is the toe hooks. So I've been riding, when I started doing the long distance, I didn't like to wear full bindings because I'm crossing roads, um, I've had dogs, dog walkers, their dogs run out in front of you because dogs seem to hate boards for some reason, um, kids and that, so I'd never really liked to be strapped in. Um, but riding it without straps wasn't great either, so the toe hooks just made a huge difference by keeping my feet in place so I can still generate that power and, and not having to keep adjusting my feet every every half an hour because they've slipped. So 
um, yeah, they were definitely a must as well. So the event itself then, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a well organized and friendly event. Um, you've got nearly 20 different countries that were represented, which was great to see. And because of that, everything was in English, all the announcements were in English, the signs were in English, and most of the riders could at least speak a little bit of English. So for me, it was, it was great. Uh, it just made the whole thing um, so much easier and the atmosphere was, was really friendly. Um, in the lead up to the, the ultra skate, I was a little bit nervous because I'd never done an ultra skate, nor has anyone on a street board before, so I didn't really have anything to gauge against. And I didn't want to turn up to a longboard event and make myself and the sport look stupid by um, you know, bailing out after 50k or, or something like that. So I was kind of nervous. As soon as we started, all of those nerves just kind of fell away because the, the atmosphere was, was, was so good and everyone was, was friendly. So um, when the race itself started, I, I had a plan to ride for at least three hours ago. Um, that, was, that was what I was hoping to do and then have like a half hour rest every three hours. But I think um, because the track was so good, I'm used to skating on rougher paths in the UK, which are, are not great for this sort of thing. Um, I actually found it a lot easier than I was expecting. So I did five hours um, straight without, without stopping. After the five hours, I had a, a break just for 10, 15 minutes. And that was one of the hardest aspects of doing the race was actually stopping. Because if you've ever ran on a treadmill, you might know what it's like when you get off and then you feel a bit funny on your feet because you're used to that being on that treadmill. But you can imagine five hours constantly on, on a street board. When I get off, I, I could barely walk. I felt like I was drunk. I couldn't walk in a, in a straight line for uh, a good minute until I got uh, used to it. So that was something I, I didn't really expect. So I did the first five hours um, non-stop. By seven hours, um, it was all going really, really well. Uh, I was over 100K much further than I thought I was going to be at, at that point. I was really hoping to do 200k in, in total, that was kind of my target. So I thought, wow, seven hours in, I'm already halfway. Um, and I just kept going, uh, so I didn't take too many breaks. But then the rain hit uh, and it all changed after that, really. So that's 150k. It's been going well so far, except it's now pissing it down. Yeah, so I continued in the rain and to be honest, for the first couple of hours it was, it was fine. I had to slow my pace slightly because I, was, I didn't want the wheels to slip out under me, but not significantly different to make much different. I think what we've got to remember is that your boards and the board that I'm riding, they're designed for a skate park. They're not designed to ride an ultra skate, and they're certainly not designed to ride for eight hours in the rain, which is, which is what I was doing. When, before it was raining, I was averaging um, one kilometre every three minutes, um, a decent pace that uh, I, could, I could maintain comfortably. Once the rain hit, that dropped to um, four and a half minutes for a kilometre, so that's, that's a massive difference, and I was putting in more effort to, to keep going. So. Yeah, the rain kind of killed me uh, in a way because it just made it um, so much more difficult and uh, quite a big, big learn if I was to ever do something like this again. The rain is really heavy now. It's no longer fun. <laughs> so uh, I got to, um, so I say I wanted to do 200K going into it. I actually got to 250, um, which was pretty good considering we're battling with rain all, all, all through the night. In a way, the rain did help me because I got so soaked. Um, when I tried to stop at midnight, I thought I'll have a, maybe I'll have an hour or two sleep. I was so cold once I'd stopped, I just couldn't get to sleep. And I thought, Do you know what, I'm just gonna get back out there and just, just carry on. So in some ways, the rain helped in that perspective because I think if I'd have fallen asleep, um, I probably would have uh, slept longer than, than I should have done. So uh, that, that helped. So, so I did 250. Uh, I think the winner did 470 kilometres, which is just insane. I was quite happy because I think out of 100 people, I placed 27th, which I thought was pretty good uh, for first person to turn up on a, on a street board, especially um, as people were quite sceptical go, going into it. So uh, yeah, I, I was pleased with what I was able to do, but some people are just astonishing. Yeah, I mean, uh, I will definitely do this again because it wasn't actually as bad as I thought it was going to be. I mean, in terms of the physical uh, endurance, 
Um, the atmosphere helps a lot. I did do a, a decent amount of training, so I didn't. I just found the whole thing fun. There was just a, a couple of moments when it was two o'clock in the morning. I was soaking wet, freezing cold. Um, but that was mainly a lot of my, my mistakes on my part by not putting my waterproofs on early enough and th things like that. So definitely doing it again in um, Amsterdam next year. Uh, but they also do one in Miami um, in February time. So I'm thinking of doing that one as well uh, next year. So uh, definitely uh, watch this space because um, I'll certainly be doing more of this sort of thing. Now the only thing I'd say is that I just wish more people would uh, Get, get on their, their street boards and do these distances because they really are capable boards. As I said earlier, I'm, I'm riding what is a park board designed for, for freestyle in a skate park and able to um, hold my own with specifically designed long boards. So we just need more people to, to get into this sport because it's honestly so much fun.